Everybody, Thomas here, and today I had an issue while I'm digging out my septic here, uh, putting in new field lines. As you can see, <clears throat> a little ball joint here. I was I was using my front end loader, took this plate off and everything. My controls kind of got wonky. I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I looked in there and I could see right there it it is backed out. I gotta figure out if I can get this thing tightened back on there and go from there. So yeah, that it's loose. Have to figure out how to tighten that up <clears throat> so bear with me i think it's actually just held in place all i gotta do is just screw this on there i just don't know what orientation this was so we'll find out and stay tuned okay so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the probably right after the introduction and everything to show the tools required to do this job you need a half inch wrench you need a 10 millimeter wrench you need a number four allen and number five allen that right there We'll get you back up and running and have a nice tight system. I am very happy to get this back up and running. Okay, step one, these little Allen wrenches you got or Allen nuts, you gotta take this one out and that one out. <clears throat> and that will, will allow you to bring the plate forward because this right here is a little screw and I was running to issues where I couldn't turn it. Uh, I might have run to clearance issues. I may have to take this off as well maybe that just take the entire plate off and put it on there but i'm going to see if i can do it without it and then i'll let you know but i've got a feeling i'm going to take these pretty much going to take these off take that plate off but i'm going to see what i can do okay so i see no other way around it half inch is what these are i've got to remove these let's see if i can get these off i don't want to torque it too much because this is actually the uh head of the valve or the the rod that opens and closes the valves. So I gotta be very careful not to over torque this, not to bend it and anything like that. These seem to be on there pretty tight. Okay, so in addition to the half inch, you're also gonna have to hold this little nut right there on the side in order to unscrew it. And that is a 10 millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I have all the tools now required. I'm just waiting to see what's on the back of this screw head right here. Whether it's gonna be a Phillips straight slot or some kind of uh, Allen wrench. I've got Allen wrenches with me. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get these off. They are on there tight, but I do have all the proper tools now. Okay, success and double success because I can actually get an Allen wrench in behind here and actually do that. So I don't have to take off the other one, which is good. The least amount of parts you can take off in the field, the better. So I'm gonna get an Allen wrench behind here, tighten the sucker on there and put her back together so I can get the sept these septic lines dug out. Okay, so a number four Allen wrench is what I use in the back here. Not exactly sure of the orientation. However, I'm gonna deduce that it's got to be in this orientation. It wouldn't make sense over here. It wouldn't make sense here. The only logical sense is 90 degrees to the right. Uh, I'll put this back on here as well and get these going. So, yeah, should be good. Again, number four, I'm gonna, I got to put these uh, Allens back in there as well. Because this one, once you set it with the set screw in the back, it is pretty tight. So, that could be a watch item, but I'm not exactly sure of the orientation. All pieces and parts are back together. Now all we have to do is just add in these little Allen screws, if you will. So I'll do that when I have two hands available. Making progress. Okay, so some pretty cool stuff here. I was able to look at where the, I guess the dirt spot was on the back. And it was obviously this one this is in the bottom left corner. This blank one's in the bottom right corner based on the orientation of this and some logic if you will this one has to be in the down direction this one has to be to the uh right as well as this one right here also on the back you'll see there's slots these you know machined faces right here will fit into the slots so all you really got to do is make sure that these orientate to the correct direction so when you move this plane right here this face 
that uh, the machine operates as it should. So all I gotta do is just line up those faces and tighten her down. I went ahead and took the boot off uh, so you can actually see what you're doing. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, then we should be good to go. Okay, so we've made all the connections. I'm showing the back plane here. You can see that one slides into there. The bottom ones slide into their appropriate slots. The plane feels nice and tight and I feel like I have all the movement required on that plane. So I'm going to go ahead and put the boot on there, the little rubber boot, which I've actually got a break in it anyways. But I'm going to put that on there and then reconnect the knob, give her an op test. And if you start feeling this plane, if you start feeling your handle get loose, go and take it off and make sure that everything's seated in there properly. Okay, now for a little op test. Make sure everything works. So up down Woo! up down Woo! everything is nice and tight as it should be i'm very happy with this fix hopefully that'll help you out if you're in the same situation it's not hard it took about 20 minutes because i had to run back and forth to go get all my dang tools because i didn't have everything in the toolbox on the back of this tractor so again hopefully that was helpful please like subscribe if you enjoyed to see thanks